The embarrassment that is, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2, it continues to deliver. Certainly not on the quality front, but very much in the comedy department. And that's because there's been some new developments, and I want to talk about them. So let's jump in. Hi, Estelden here. More than once I've thought I was completely done talking about this game. There's no question about it, this game's going to be an absolute train wreck. I've got no actual interest in the product itself anymore. But just hearing more of this bad news that's coming out of Paradox and Hard Suit Labs makes it really hard not to want to hear the juicy details of what's going on down there, what the whole development story is. The original Bloodlines, of course, is one of my favourite games ever, and it is infuriatingly sad that after all of this time, all of this waiting, the sequel is likely going to not even be worthy of a bargain bin purchase, let's be honest. I'd say there's a small chance that some of the narrative stuff that Brian and Soda actually worked on, that could be good if it makes it into the game. But I don't really have any confidence that they're going to do that justice and they're going to implement it well. I'd say that's probably not going to happen. This whole thing is just a big mess. In saying all that though, there are some new staff changes at Hard Suit Labs. And this time it's not so much about anyone being fired, it's in fact the opposite. Paradox and Hard Suit Labs have brought on some new staff. So hooray, the sky it surely isn't falling. Everything, it, it must be okay. Let's not kid ourselves because it's not. Because this actually plays a little bit into what I spoke about in my last video where I mentioned and I think that hard suit labs are either shutting down or restructuring. And it turns out it was the latter, which makes sense because not every studio is EA where they shut down absolutely everything after a couple of mistakes like we saw with Westwood and Origin Systems. That's not what's going on here. They're doing the full restructure and the studio seems to be changing directions. So there's been at least two additions to the Hard Suit Labs team and we only know this because in this new current age everyone likes to brag about it on Twitter. And you can see here we've got Jordan, Michael Lemos, I think it is. And he basically says that he's very excited to be able to start this new gig at Heart Suit Labs as a senior narrative designer. Now that means he probably didn't replace Brian, he's not the big cheese, he's not the head honcho, but he's going to be doing a fair bit of work. And something that really caught my eye, and I saw this doing the rounds, a lot of other fans felt this was a little bit odd, because he mentions that he's going to be helping them get current stuff out the door. Probably not the best way to put it, if I'm being honest. Like, you've got this respected IP, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. A lot of people have been excited for this game. They've been waiting with bated breath. And then you come out and you say, yeah, look, we just need to get this out the door. Get it out. We want to move on to better things, different things. That is fairly deplorable in my eyes. And look, I'm not blaming Jordan here. He probably just came out with that. It was like 4 a.m. in the morning or something. He was excited. He was in bed and he thought, I'm going to post this now. We're allowed to do it. Let's get on with it. I want to tell all my fans. But I just wonder if that is the mindset at Paradox. It's the mindset at Hard Suit Labs that they've got this burden that they want to get out there and then they can just move on. Because I've seen a lot, there's been like job listings, there's been a lot of talk that Hard Suit Labs are maybe making something in the horror space as their next game. So they're pretty much just wiping their hands of this. They want to get it out, it's probably not really going to be finished, and they're not going to spend the time fixing it, as shit as something like an Anthem is from Bioware and EA, at least they're apparently making, what is it, like Anthem 2.0? I'm sure it's going to be just as shit, I'm... I don't think it's going to be anything of any sort of quality. It sounds like a marketing gimmick to me, but at least they're doing something. It sounds like with Bloodlines 2, get it out. That's all we're doing. Let's get it out there. Now, in terms of Brian and his replacement, because we're going to say that Jordan, he's replacing Kara, we've got Samantha, who is replacing Brian. She is the lead narrative designer at Hard Suit Labs, and at this point, she's going to be supporting the new team, doing whatever she can in tiny ways, that probably means she's not doing that much work, to be honest, on Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. So I think it's quite obvious that the narrative side of that game, it's done and dusted. They moved those guys on, and now they're bringing in the new blood for whatever they're really going to be doing next. But it raises a few questions, because a lot of people, even if we go back to when Brian and Kai originally got the sack, there were a lot of people on YouTube, a lot of people on forums, any place you looked, there were still these hardcore defenders who were saying things like, oh, well, I'm sure the narrative work's just been done. I'm sure Brian is still on good terms with Hard Suit Labs and Paradox. They've just sent him and Kara and Kai on their way because they don't need them anymore. But clearly not, because their roles are being replaced within the studio. So they might not be doing all the work or starting again on Bloodlines 2. I'm sure that work's been done, but they're still going to be doing something. They're going to be helping out, as she says, in tiny ways where they can. 
So she's excited. She gets a lot of support, Jordan included. Great. Everything's great. They're moving on. But the state of the game, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2, I'm... I'm beyond sort of worried. At this point, it's like, yep, yeah, let's see the train wreck. I want to see it. It's going to be a good laugh. And that is about it. The actual product, Jesus Christ. I really don't want to know what sort of state it's in. Now, if you don't know Samantha, don't worry, because I don't think sort of many people are too familiar with her. She's not like a Chris Avalone in the industry, let's say. And the reason for that is because if we go to her game credits, so this is Moby Games. It gives a list of her video game credits here. We've got uh, Star Wars The Old Republic, so an MMO. And we've got Mass Effect Andromeda. So it's not like she worked on Mass Effect 1, Mass Effect 2, the games where the writing was a bit of a high point. A lot of people loved it. People still revisit. They're still waiting, again, with bated breath, they're waiting for the Mass Effect Remastered Trilogy. And the reason for that is because Andromeda was a complete disgrace in the writing department, the gameplay, the world. It was all rubbish. And this is the credits that she's got. So she worked on this game. None of the others, just MMO stuff. Speed dating for ghosts, I'm not even going to click on it. But Andromeda, if that's the sort of credibility that she's got, she's worked on that. Now she's replacing Brian Mitsoda, an absolute genius in the industry. He's a pioneer. He crafted one of the best games of all time. Not just in the vampire space or the RPG space, like ever. Like a lot of people hold that game to such a gold standard, even though it had some big technical issues. And I've seen so many people say, oh, well, they're repeating the same pattern that happened with the first game. It's going to be like that all over again. We're going to get Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 and it's going to have a mess of a development and the mods are going to fix it. The only reason that the first game had the dedicated modding community that it had, there is uh, Wesp, I see him post on some of the RPG forums that are out there. Wesp, the modding community, they made the original into a playable game. But the reason it worked is because what was there, it was like a floor gem. So there was a great game underneath the surface of all these bugs and glitches that the original Vampire, the Masquerade Bloodlines game had. And the modding scene, it just sort of fixed that. It kind of fixed the rough edges and just made it playable from start to finish without too many problems. But you need a quality game in the midst of all that for that to even be worth it. And I can tell you right now that Vampire Bloodlines 2, it's not going to have that. The game is a mess. And even if some of that writing from Brian, dare I say Kara, some of it is good, I don't think it's going to have been implemented in even an acceptable state for a role-playing video game to be worth even salvaging. Like if there's some nice writing, some good text in there, I'm sure you can remove it and make like a, a visual novel out of it. But I'm going to say that that is about it. I can't imagine that the Hardsuit Labs developers have any clue with what they're doing when it comes to implementing like a good quality quest where you've got a ton of choices, you've got these great characters, there's a world to explore. None of that is going to be there. It's, it's sad to say, and you can say I'm guessing, I haven't seen the game yet, but all of this news, we've had absolutely no good news since about 16 months ago, I think that's when we actually last got some gameplay footage and things were sounding okay. That's when we can be a little bit optimistic. That is gone. Paradox, remember, they're not commenting on any of this stuff. So we found these things out. You know, we've got Samantha. We've got Jordan working on these games. And the only reason we know it is because it's on Twitter. We've had to find out and do a bit of detective work to get to the bottom of all this. Same with Kara getting the flick as well, presumably. We only know it because we, we find out ourselves. So Paradox have not done a statement, as far as I know, since the original sacking of Prime Soda. So it's been a while and the bad news just continues. It's, it's really shambolic. And there was one other thing I wanted to mention here because I didn't know this until today. But there's Christian Schluter or Schlatter. I know there's some German people who've watched some of my videos. Maybe you can correct me there. But... This guy was the RPG segment lead producer at Paradox. So he was like in charge of the RPG division. So that's probably not just Bloodlines 2. There's also Vampire the Masquerade Swan Song. So there's a few RPGs going around in this universe from Paradox. And this Christian guy, he was the boss of all of them. So he had this role for at least a year, a little bit over a year. And they got rid of him at the same time, pretty much. Uh, in, right in between Brian, Kai and then Kara leaving in September. So you've got Christian sort of just thrown in the mix of all this. He's out the door as well. So it's very, very clear that Paradox are not happy at all with how the RPG division is going. And from what we've heard about Hard Suit Labs moving on to something horror-based, I wouldn't be surprised if their next game's not an RPG at all. I think Paradox might have seen... I 
don't think they know what they're doing. I don't think they're experienced enough in this area. We're not going to bother to hone in their skills and try and teach them. Dare I say, bring in someone like Chris Avalone again instead of getting rid of him and actually have him teach some of the staff, teach them some skills on how to craft an RPG. No, nah, they're probably going to be moving on. And they've moved on all of these people. A lot of the people who were coolly involved with the start of Vampire Bloodlines 2, by the way. And where, to me, it gets really shambolic is still what they're doing with these pre-orders. So you've got the First Blood Edition. You've got the Unsanctioned Edition. You've got the Blood Moon Edition. This is the one that really gets me. Where they're advertising Story Pack 1 and 2 and an expansion. There is no way that they're going to be developing this properly after the game actually comes out. Because we know it's rushed. We know that these new staff members are just, yep, let's get this out the door. We want to move on to other things. So where are these going to come from? All I can think is they're either going to use like a skeleton crew to make them just so they can technically honor their obligations for the poor people who haven't got a refund on this yet. And then they can technically say, yep, we got those out. No need to, don't come to us with a lawsuit. We gave you this incredible expansion. Come on. And that'll be about it. There's no way it can be any good because they're going to probably use stuff that was already in the game to some extent and they'll probably remove those things out of the game and then try and sell it to you separately. That's the only other sort of solution I see for them. But I really think that if you're someone who's been following this actively and you've still got this edition pre-ordered, come on, please consider making them sort of put their money where their mouth is and actually give you a, a reasonable product. I mean, it's the least that you should be getting. And I, I want to say as well that I think it's pretty scummy from Paradox because there's a lot of people, they're very casual when it comes to following video game news. They might see the big announcements at like E3 or maybe Gamescom, one of the big events. They'll see it when they maybe just have a brief look around Facebook or whatever social media they use. They won't look at it again. There's a lot of people who would have seen Vampire's original announcement, Bloodlines 2's original announcement, and gone, great, when it comes out, I'll probably check it out. Oh, the original creators involved, that old one I played many years ago, that's really awesome, I'm going to check it out. And then Paradox have very quietly announced all of these departures, or in some cases, like Cara, they didn't even do a, a proper announcement, we found out by other means. The casual fans, they're not going to know. So when this comes out, I'm sure they'll do a bit of marketing for it. A lot of people will essentially be tricked and they'll buy the game and not know until they've parted with their money that this thing's a complete joke. And then they might find out later, oh, that Brian guy's not even there anymore. I didn't know that. And that'll be the sad state of it. So Bloodlines 2, here's where we're at. They've restructured the team. They're continuing to do that. They're ready to move on to other things. Get this game out the door. We've had an absolute enough. And that'll be pretty much it. So whenever this comes out, hopefully we get a bit of comedy out of it. But in terms of quality, no. This thing's just looking pretty much like a scam at this point. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks very much and bye-bye.